Before I go any further, I want to do a few checks. Uh, one, I want to make sure my piston to valve clearance is okay, and I also want to make sure I have the right length push rods. Um, I'm doing all this because I'm not going with the stock cam and a little concerned about the lift that's on the cam. Uh, the rest of the valve train is stock from a geometry standpoint. Um, as you know, I did the trunning upgrade, but that doesn't change the geometry. Uh, but this is just a safe thing to do. Uh, so I'm gonna get to be able to check both of these things. You need a couple of uh, a couple of tools. One is this here, which is an adjustable push rod. And you can see it's in two pieces, and this end screws off. You can see the how oh, it gets longer there. See the threads, so you can adjust the length of this thing. Um, that's the other thing. And the other thing you need is a solid lifter. Um, I'll show you how to make one of those out of an old lifter. For an LS, it's really easy to make a hydraulic lifter into a solid lifter. Um, these are my old lifters here, and that's what I'm going to use. And I'll convert these two over. First step is to get that little spring clip out of the top. Comes out real easy. Just get a little screwdriver, get in there, and pop it out. There you go. That's that's it there. Now the cup should come out like that. The next step is to get that plunger out. And the, what I found works fairly well is uh, try to take a small screwdriver or have this this little pick um, and just try to hook it and get it out towards the end. Um, there's a lot of suction again on this thing and. You're never going to get it all the way out, but what I've tried to do is get it out close. Okay, that's pretty close. And I've got this magnet, and put the magnet on there to, to, to pull it out. Right like that. So I cleaned up my mess here and all the parts. So what you want to do is basically take the plunger and put it in upside down. So this is how the plunger came out of the lifter. Dump the spring, take the plunger, turn it upside down, push it back down in there. And it'll take a little bit of doing to get it down just because of suction. The fit is so tight in this thing. Take your push rod cup, put it back in right side up, Okay, again, really tight fit, and basically, you're gonna, it's a little bit of a challenge here, but you want to try to put the, that spring clip back in to hold all this in. Let's see how successful I am. And once you get one of the other three sides in, the other side will drop in. Just like that, so you can see that the clip is, is back in there. And this is now a solid lifter. I have everything cleaned up. I made up four of these. I've labeled them with an S for solid so I don't inadvertently get them mixed up with any of the uh, real ones. That would be, that would not be good. <laughs> to check push rod length and piston to valve clearance, the first thing you have to do is mock up and put the head on the block um, as if you're going to assemble it. So to do that uh, on an LS, you need to first put the lifters in. Um, this is the lifter bucket because the head covers up the lifters on like a Gen 1 small block. And then you also need to have a gasket on here that um, you know, is the right thickness. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reuse the old, the old gasket, okay, which is already compressed. Um, but first step is to get these lifters, uh, your uh, solid lifters that you made up and um, put them with the lifter bucket into the engine again just like as if you were going to assemble the engine put the head on
Now you got to bolt the head down. It doesn't have to be torqued down for that. We don't have to be that accurate with it. Uh, but you're going to want to use your old head bolts. Uh, the head bolts for LSs are torque yield, and uh, they can only be used once. So you certainly don't want to use a new set. So I'm going to go ahead and just snug this thing down. First thing we'll check is the push rod. Do that. You have to mock up a little bit of the valve train. You're going to need the rocker support. So all I did with this lifter here was, um, or rocker here, is, is just snug it up just to hold the, the, uh, the support in place. The first thing I'm going to do is I just want to make sure that this cam is on the base circle for cylinder one. Um, I had set this up a little bit better. Um, I could have done that with the head off, but I didn't. Um, and you can't see the cam real well on an LS or the lifters where the lifters are. So to do that, it's good to just put in a couple push rods. Okay. Throw the lifters on. And cylinder one. Pull those down and it'll rotate around until those things are uh, to the lifter stop moving. I know they're on the base circle. All right, so I'm just rotating back and forth, and I am on the base circle for cylinder one. We're on the base circle, I don't know, but I really don't care. I'm just going to be on the base circle. So one thing I found with the LS is it's really hard if you just take your checker um, uh, push rod and put it in here. You can't get in here the way the head's designed to be able to turn the checker to adjust the length. So this is a little trick that I that I tried and it seems to work pretty good. And it is take the rocker off. Okay. I'm gonna take out this standard push rod that I put in here just to make sure we had base circle. I'm gonna take the checker push rod. I'm gonna wind it out a bit. I know it's pretty short where it's at. Um, and I'm gonna put it in the hole. Okay. Push down, make sure that lifter is on the base circle. Take the screw bolt out of the rocker and then just set it on here. Okay. And you'll get a real good idea of how close you are. You know, as obviously you can see, I'm not even close in length. So then you take it out, screw it out a little bit more, put it back in. Put the lifter in place, just hold it down with your finger, and I can see I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm close. Okay? It's only a little bit of movement there. So I'll take it and pull it out. Give it just a, maybe half a turn. Put it back down in there. Push it down, okay. I have just a little bit of play, so I'm pretty close. But of course, obviously, I don't have everything all tightened up. So then, just put the screw in, tighten it up, bring everything down, and see if that's it. So, put it down there, and I have a little play back and forth, um, and just a tick up and down. So, take this off. Because what you don't want to do is compress this spring at all, which is easy not to do. And then we have a solid lifter in there, so we're not, we know we're not getting any spring compression on the lifter. So I'm going to take this and just turn it a quarter of a turn. Put it back in there. Bolt this guy down. Tighten it down again. Let's see where we're at. Mm. I'd say I'm just a tick too tight. But that's okay. That's what we need to know. So at this point, take the rocker back off. Pull that checker. Push rod back out. Hold it so it doesn't so it doesn't turn. All right, so here's the push rod out of the motor, and what we want to do is count how many turns it takes 
to bring the push rod back down to uh, the end of the adjustment. If you'll notice on the push rod, uh, where is it here? Right, it's probably really hard to see. There's a dotted line here, so you can count the revolutions. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and basically just screw this thing back together. So it'll be one, two, three, eleven, and I would say eleven and a half turns. Okay, so we're eleven point five turns. Okay, each turn is fifty thousandths of an inch. So take that times O five, and we'll get eleven point five times point O five is equal to point five seven five. Okay. So that's how much I had to extend the push rod. The push rod base, when it's all screwed together like it is sitting here now, like this, is 6.800. Okay, so let's add that, plus 6.800. That equals 7.375. Okay. And uh, they recommend around 60 thousandths preload for an LS. So let's add, since we adjusted to where there's no preload, just took all the slop out of the system, let's add 60 thousandths onto that, and we get plus 0.06, and we get 7.434. Okay, push rods come in 50 thousandths length increments. So you can get a 7.4, 7.400 or 7.450. Okay, I'm falling right in between there. 7.4 is going to be what I want. I don't want more preload on it than, than what's required, um, than what's recommended. And uh, that is actually the push rods that I bought. So, um, but I checked it and I know that they're good. These are the push rods here. I don't know if you can read that, but it says right there 7.4. So I've got the right length push rods.